It's a pass though. It's a short pass though, which isn't saying much considering none of them are really much over 14 hands anyway. Micro, so she has actually something different? Oh, it's just, okay. We just call her a micro passo. Gotcha. It's like, I didn't think that was a breed. Are you tight enough to go? Okay. Go away. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to act a little bit crazier, yeah? There you go. Crazy wild passo. Good job. Hi, Judy. Hi. So that's preschool. You guys will notice a pattern. It even has a mini clip for its mini passo self. A little baby clip. All right, now I'm just gonna walk off and do kindergarten. Okay, so questions about kindergarten. When I'm working a horse, if I walk off and I turn and they stop, I'm gonna wait before I ask them to back up. If they, if I turn and stop and they keep coming forward, I'm going to go ahead and back them out of my space, like immediately as soon as I turn around. But if I turn around and they stop, I'm going to give them a second before I ask. Okay? I'm going to ask with my hands first. They do that. I'm not going to use the lead rope. If they don't back up, if they don't back up from this, then I'm going to use the lead rope. The next time I walk off, I'm gonna do the same steps. I'm not just gonna immediately go to knock it on her face, okay? So I'm gonna walk off, turn and face, wave my hands, that's passing, okay? The whole idea is that she'll back out of my space with zero physical pressure. If I have to back her up with the lead rope, that doesn't count, they have not passed. Walk them off again, turn and face, use your hands. When they'll take a step back with you just using your hands, that's passing, you can move on. The more advanced the horses get and the more they know, you'll notice I got after her when she started screaming and I just backed her up immediately. I didn't worry about my hands. I just went ahead and tried to get her attention. I don't like for them to be paying attention to anything else besides me. Especially when I take them new places and there's crazy tarps or I go to a new fairgrounds, a new arena, a new trail ride. You're so tiny. So for those of you that don't own Passos, they may be short, they're always athletic. Every single one of them. We were talking about Paso babies the other day and we brought one in when I first got here and I was holding it on the lead rope, probably three feet away from me and at all at like a three second interval, the, the bull jumped up, bit me, struck me and kicked me all at the same time before I even knew that it had happened. I'm like, you were over there, and all of a sudden you're on top of me, and all these things have happened, and I didn't even, I do not have the reflexes for passos, it's fine. All right, so she passed out with flying colors. I'm going to go ahead and tie her lead rope up. You guys will have to listen to me breathe heavy, because I have zero cardio, stamina, or endurance. Also not a good combination for passos, who are the the epitome of all of those things together. Now, as Michael talks about, this whole thing is open Q&A. Is there anything that I've said that you guys have questions about or need clarity on, or the repetition of all of this on these horses just isn't making sense to you? anything so keep in mind the same system that we're teaching you the same system that we do in the horse health course and at the club and all the things these same steps are used on horses whether they come in and they're a cult start whether they've come in and they've killed people 
or they're just a its horse that needs a tune-up. It doesn't matter what experience they have or don't have, have we're going to ask the same questions. Wow, you're short. <laughs> oh, anytime Michael rides something. So we, passes are short. A lot of them are short just naturally. Um, and it's funny whenever we have, you know how Michael was talking about, people will try to buy our two-year-olds with like seven rides on them. We can't make videos on those horses with Michael because he is tall. And if people don't know Passos, that's another thing that you get crucified for. They're like, oh my gosh, he's riding a baby. That thing's six months old. He's had a weanling. Like, nope, that is full grown, ladies and gentlemen. Full grown. But I like when they're short enough, I can stay on the ground, put my leg on top of them, and just take one little bitty baby hop and then be on their back. Yeah, so, so shoulder is going to be, let me go through and do, she asked the question, when do I start moving the shoulder? So in our respect series, which is grade preschool through 12, I want to make sure that I obviously did kindergarten backing up. I did first grade, which was undivided attention, walk a circle, give me your face. Then I skipped desensitizing, who did that yesterday, and all these horses were good with it. So I would do flag stick, do that. I would do flag, um, desensitizing in motion, which is putting the tarp on their back and asking them to do first grade again. After they've done that, I'm going to mount, which is fourth grade. I'm going to hop on and flex one time to each direction at a standstill, which is fifth grade. Then I'm going to go into sixth grade, which is disengaging the hindquarters. So all I'm going to do is reach down, do the same drill we've been doing, pull around to the butt. That's the butt. The head was doing our flexing in motion, or not flexing in motion, doing our um, standing still and flexing one time to each side. And then we'll also do that again when we do spirals. We're going to be working on the head, getting the head button, getting everything soft with that. You're also going to, we'll do stopping, which is in the order there. And then we'll start doing one-sided flexing in motion, which is basically makes their feet separate from their head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock my outside hand in on my knee, and I'm going to flex to the inside and keep going forward. So I'm going to get her where I can start asking, give me your face, move forward at the same time. So in the beginning, it's just going to look like you're going to be able to get just a little bit of her head movement. And it's going to seem like you're going in a circle, even though you're full, you should just go forward. Basically, all we're going to do is we're going to start getting her where she can keep her head bent and still go forward. So we'll keep working on that softness and getting her where she'll send forward. You can also cheat the system and just practice disengaging her, send her forward, get her head, send her forward, get her head, send her forward. That's just getting in reps. So this is, is flexing in motion, which means you're going forward and moving their head at the same time. If you feel like they're stopping every time you try to flex their head, you can literally just Flex their head, give them their face. Flex their head, give them their face. Flex their head, give them their face. And all I'm doing is trying to get her soft enough that I can easily get her head moving separately from her feet. So you'll get to where you can take a horse in a straight line and you have them so soft that it could be looking back over here at your hip and still going in the straight line. So when you're trying to get ready for lead changes and departures and getting your horse soft and doing all these advanced maneuvers, all it is is layering these drills on top of each other. The shoulders get really confusing when you hear people talk about it, but all you have to do is make you a circle, find a cone, find a pole, find something. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a tiny circle. So I'm going to keep bumping her in on the pole make my circle tiny. When I want to start moving her shoulder, which is the third button, when I want to start moving her shoulder, all I'm going to do is I'm going to lock my hand into her shoulder here. I'm going to open up my leg on this side, my hand on that side, and put on my inside leg. So the only way, the only way that she can move out and get bigger on the circle 
is if she's moving away from that shoulder, okay? So as you're working on that, if you have her head bent and you can see her nose this direction and your circle's getting bigger, you know that you're moving that shoulder. It might not be, you know, super fancy in the beginning, obviously, but if her head is bent and she can't straighten up, if you're moving out on that circle, you're working on the shoulder. And then you'll get her soft more so because the shoulder, you're skipping a lot of the flexing and motion practice. But right here, even without her having much of that, I have her head bent and I'm making my circle bigger. Inside leg on, outside leg off. If she freezes up, it's just like anything else that we do with horses that we talk about. It's motion over maneuver. Anytime you're working with the shoulders, if you don't have forward, you have to stop what you're doing, ask for forward, and then ask for the shoulder again. If you're going and they freeze up or they try to stop, free them up, get them going back forward, and then ask for the shoulder. But even like our horses that are in for training, we're not typically working on the shoulder until we know without a shadow of a doubt that we have that head super soft. Because that's the big thing that gets people in trouble. The shoulders are kind of like a bonus. Anything more advanced that you want to work on, anything that you want to start working on maneuvers that are fancier, you're going to want to have that shoulder control. But just remember, whenever you lock that in, lock that hand into the shoulder there, if her head is bent and your circle is getting bigger, you're getting that shoulder movement. Okay? So just think about that. That's the easiest part. But you have to make sure you have something in the center of your circle to look at to know if your circle is getting bigger. Otherwise, you'll just be out there in the pasture and you're like, I think it's getting bigger, but then you don't know. So if you're on a tiny circle and their head is to the inside and your circle is getting bigger, you are doing the drill. Okay? And that's, that's the simplest way to put it. Now you'll start getting more and more, the more you do this exercise, you'll be able to just send her forward and move her out and be sending her out like that. The more that you do it, the more comfortable you get. But in the beginning, you're just going to make that circle bigger. Does that make sense? And that, for me, because it was, you see all these exercises, you see all these things, and you're like, I want to do that. But nobody wants to do the, the five minute or the 10 minute work that seems so tedious and ridiculous. But ultimately, is what's going to help you. So if she freezes up right there, I'm going to squeeze her and send her forward first. Get her head bent. Squared up a little bit there. Let me get her softer. So again, we're kind of skipping steps because we want to answer the question for you. But the more flexing and getting her soft first, the less resistance she'll get when I lock that hand in. She still doesn't have quite enough forward being soft to work on that. But she's not very far off, especially doing it with you. It's not going to take you guys long at all. And don't think with these exercises, when I say you practice them, you get them going, you're working on them, don't think that that means you have to work on these for hours a day. Just get a better result than the day forward and go on to the next thing. As long as they're passing, as long as they've answered the questions, don't think you have to stay there until it gets perfect. Move on to the next thing because now all of the craziness that you do with her over the next couple days, going back to the drills is going to be so easy because she's done everything above and beyond. Want to write it? You do not have to. So what the reason that we have our halter under our stuff, under whatever we're riding in or if we're using it, is if we're out on the trail and we want to tie a horse. Or if we're all out on the trail and we want to get off and somebody needs to go pee and you're holding six horses. It's a lot safer to hold lead rope than it is to have other people's horses held by bits and reins, especially in a group when you're the little spider monkey stuck between all of them. Um, but we, and we also keep our lead ropes on our saddle. So, or with us, so if we go out and about and we have a horse that doesn't have forward and we didn't bring a crop with us, the little tail on this, you can use it as an over-under, as a popper. So, it's just nice to always have some, and I have a lot of friends that like to go pee, so. No. 
Um, when we're riding, if we're doing jumping or things like that out on the trail too, and you have somebody out with you that's not super confident and you don't want them to hang on the horse's face, you can do the same thing so they can grab that just like a wither strap. So they can jump and not be pulling on their horse's face while they're going. Or if you're bridalist and you're trying not to fall off, all kinds of things, it's fine. Multiple, multiple tools. Do you want to hop on here real quick? Take your through Oh, who did? Sorry. Okay. I was like, wait a second. I was talking to you like she was you. My brain. Yeah. No, she's, she's right there. It wouldn't take her long at all. She was really good on one side, stick on the stickier on the other, but I don't know why I just took your reins off. All right, you are now going to do a bridalist session. I want you to take her around. I want a sliding stop, roll back, tempi changes, a flying lead change in the middle. And I want you to end with a vaulting descent. Which on this one, that just means stepping off. Yeah, she's, I squished her pretty good. She's very cute. She is a button. Kelsey, are you ready for another horse? Yes. She looks like a little baby deer. A cute little baby deer. She's getting ready to walk over the mounting block for you. Um, if you can disengage your hindquarters for me, so just pull around to her butt. Her eyes. Okay, cool. To the other side. Look at her butt. Look, 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 look. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, now go through some obstacles. Should have definitely brush that this morning. Just gonna go back at a button here shortly. concentration face. You're like staring into my soul over here. I don't know the answer. I can check your teeth and I can tell you exactly how old she is not. Too long. They get stepped on. It's fine. I haven't, I need to cut it off, but I can't. It grows so slow, I know that if I'm unhappy with it, then I'm stuck with it. Thank you. Very tangly. I give you guys hair care instructions on horses, not on myself. Would you like a pool doodle? Oh, okay, gotta stop, gotta turn around. I think you're gonna end up being the sneaky one in the soccer game. Just gonna come out of nowhere. So Michael and I are not allowed to play soccer or pool noodles together because we just beat the tar out of each other the whole time. Or unsaddle each other, take bridles off, unhook reins, tie reins, the back cinches, you know. Whatever we can craftily do at a run. We got banned from tag and quidditch. Banned from what? Oh, you're not banned here. We have Patty. Where's Patty at? There. Yeah. So we have this one. We got Linda. And you have people that are going to play at your level. So it's, you just hang out with them and you guys run into each other for fun. Especially Patty. You got to watch her. I'm going to start giving her hand and being like, okay, you need to not, you're playing by yourself. I don't think you got anything to worry about. Going is not my problem. <laughs> All right. Feel good? Don't let her take your toe off. This round pin has so many stories in it. Every hole. Every hole has a reason. I think that's one of the first things I want to do when we're done with training horses is get a new round pin. Because there won't be holes in it anymore. Which will be great. Uh, we're going to finish up the horses we have and we're going to make a decision after next year what we're going to do. It just, it's like 
because Michael is the only program where I know in the world where the man behind the name physically rides the horses every day. Yeah. And it's just a lot, especially trying to raise a family. And we don't really specialize in nice horses, so. And that might change. We might get where we're taking roping horses for training, because right now that seems to be his thing, so. Pardon? Yeah, that's kind of where we're at. But I think it, to make a good decision about it, we need to take a year not working 18 hours a day on just horses that want to eat us. It's the same thing, you want to prevent burnout, you want to prevent, and we're catching everything early enough now, enough to see that it's an issue. So, I am looking forward to not having to watch my husband be on horses for that many hours a day. At least horses that, he can be on that many horses for horses that he wants to be on. Feel good? All right. So you're bringing the next pony?